I'm here with Marilyn Stemp, who is a good friend and uh, one of the leading lights within our industry and a Dealer News Top 100 Women in Power Sports winner. Marilyn, congratulations. Oh, thank you, Robin. I'm just delighted to be here, and I absolutely want to make sure I'm totally um, attentive to thank uh, the Dealer News staff for holding the Top 100 event in the first place and the National Power Sports Dealer Association for opting in there. Um, I feel so honored just to be included in this amazing group of women, and I have to say it was delightful to find a bunch of names on the list that I didn't yet know, because I really think it's important in our industry to bring in new blood, fresh people who want to participate here with us, and it's incumbent on all of us that have been here for a while to make them welcome, get to know them, and give them the opportunities that we have had to be in a wonderful industry that has amazing individuals. So thank you all so much for doing that. At the same time, I'll say that, you know, of course, it's a, a difficult job that you all had to even pick the 100 women because, you know, it'll be fraught with issues yes, about who could have been, who should have been, <laughs> right? But as you say, and I think Bob made it very clear, this will continue and there will be an opportunity um, for other names that may have been left off to be added to the list. There will be, and just as you know, being a publisher yourself, um, the issue that comes out right after this show has the first of the women profiles. And Genevieve Schmidt, who couldn't make it, Elisa Klickinger, another winner, yes. has already talked to her fellow woman. They've talked about things and how to pay it forward and, and new initiatives that Genevieve's got. So, yeah, we're, we're going to profile every one of those 100 women and then some. That's wonderful to hear. And, you know, I was also pleased to um, find out about the Lily Project and how, you know, this effort to celebrate a woman in our industry who really has been largely overlooked. She's not in the AMA Hall of Fame, even though there's an entire uh, wing of her stuff and the Buckeyes and the, everything is there, Yes, just not her. So you might actually say that anybody who wasn't on that list that could have been They're in good is company. <laughs> really very good company with Lily, right? But, you know, I really see her story as so human. Yes, it's a, a story of a woman, but much as, you know, the world's fastest Indian was the story of a man. It's still elevated motorcycling in a mainstream way that I think is vital to in including motorcycling as a, a possibility for moviegoers who've never ridden. You know, it's a way to bring our industry into a more mainstream path for and sure. make it real and just make it human. It doesn't matter if you're a guy or a girl. You know, we all love this industry and we want to ride and it's available to all of us. No barriers. We don't want barriers. I think that's the big thing. You also mentioned it's important to lower the barriers and, and meet younger people and new people. You're staying over for the Mecham auction to do the, the Flying Pistons presentation? Yes, I mean, we, this is the uh, fourth year, I think I'm saying that right, that Mecham has been gracious enough to allow us to bring um, tiny customized Strider bikes to that auction for auctioning there in front of that very high profile crowd. We could have not found an audience like that anywhere. And the beauty of these little bikes, they are donated to us by Strider initially. We send them to custom motorcycle builders all over the country um, who return them to us. They sell at Mecham. That money goes directly to All Kids Bike, which is a program of the Strider Education Foundation. That program is on a mission to get every child in America to learn to ride a bicycle as part of kindergarten PE class. The whole point there is if it's in public school PE, every child, boy, girl, every demographic, urban, rural, no barriers whatsoever. Every child has to learn to ride a bike. And you know, we see the, the timeline there for brand new interest in two wheels, a two-wheeled life confidence, autonomy, everything that motorcycling has given us as adults, we can they, start they a much really quicker early. timeline, yes, and get them up and running sooner. So it's a program I'm totally dedicated to and super passionate about, and it's taken a lot of partnerships, but nothing good ever happens without a lot of partners. Now, going back when I was talking to Robert Pandia, who's a brand ambassador for All Kids Bike, um, the disturbing fact was, he said 75, 78% of kids will never ride a bicycle. Yes, isn't that off? I mean, when you look at those statistics, I don't know about you, but a bicycle was my first vehicle. Um, and, you know, that's why I think it's so important that we bring bicycling back because it begins a two-wheeled lifestyle. It's the first vehicle for a child. And, you know, we've just got to start them earlier than in their teens. We've lost them in their teens. Yep. We've got to get them when they're five and six years old 
get them away from screens and other distractions and understanding um, just the, the freedom and, and beauty of, of riding. Uh, and that's that's when the, the the mind is still forming, and they learn things. <laughs> by by the time they're in their teens, they already know it all, and we'll never reach them again. And you so. speak like a parent. <laughs> yes, that's exactly right. So thanks for a moment to talk about that. It is a great passion of mine, and hopefully it will continue. In fact, we've actually started having builder breakfasts um, with uh, Ross Myers. Uh, Mandy and Shelley welcomed us in last year during Bike Week at Ross Myers Harley Davidson. So we do a program there um, with uh, the e-bikes, the little Stasic e-bikes that Harley calls Iron E's. And we are customizing five of them for the second time um, this spring to be unveiled at that event in Daytona. Awesome. So, and that's part of the, the regular bike week craziness? Yes, yes. Awesome. So another fun thing that we're doing. So usually when things are fun, people will come on board. <laughs>